Marvel pitch meeting, the cape is mightier than the pen. Chris, welcome to Marvel Studios. Yes, welcome, Chris. It's not every day we get to hear a pitch from an Oscar-winning screenwriter. Thanks so much. It's great to be here, but I have to admit, I was a little bit surprised that you called. I didn't think my screenplay was the kind of story that you'd be looking to produce. <laughs> I get it. When people hear Marvel, they think about the Avengers and superpowers. And we're proud of those movies. But we're ready to show the world that Marvel can produce any genre. Well, that's fantastic. So good to hear. So tell us about the screenplay. Well, it's a family drama. It's a story of a young woman who has complex relationships with her parents. She hasn't seen them in over a year, but she shows up unexpectedly for the holidays. Pam, this is just the kind of story that you've been looking for. Grounded and realistic. Chris, would you break it down for us? Well, Emily arrives at her parents' Thanksgiving dinner unannounced. She's guarded and doesn't reveal her true self. I see. So she's using some kind of a cloaking device. Um, well... Frank, please, please, Frank. I'm sorry, Chris. Please continue. Well, th then we see a flashback to her childhood where we learn about some formative events of her young life. So this is where we learn her origin story. Well, in a manner of speaking, yes, please, but... Please, Chris, continue. Well, back in the present, the young woman finds a watch that was given to her by her grandfather. We then see another flashback where she learns about the significance of the watch. Of course. She learns to use the watch to travel through time. Frank, please remember, we're not doing Infinity War or Endgame here. We're striving for realism. I don't think he intended for the watch to let someone travel through time. Right, Chris? That's right, Frank. <laughs> exactly. So, Frank, you see, the watch can freeze and unfreeze time. But the woman can't use the watch to travel through time. It's not that kind of a movie. Of course, Pam. That makes sense. I'm so sorry, Chris. So, Chris, what does the climax of the story look like? Well, the woman finds a common goal for the family, but she first has to demonstrate true leadership and inspiration. Oh, I know. She can say in a loud, booming voice, family assemble. I love that, Frank. <laughs> and just as she says, family assemble, she can raise her magic hammer. She doesn't have a magic hammer. But Chris, without the ability to lift a magic hammer over her head, how will the audience know that she's worthy? Um, through character development, I guess? I'll tell you what, Chris. Let's keep this discussion going over dinner. You can meet the other members of the Marvel team. Mm -hmm. I hope you don't mind, but the, uh, the restaurant has a dress code. Can we help you on with your cape? Uh, I didn't bring a cape. Oh, no problem. Let me give you a hand. <laughs> now, Chris, the restaurant has a place to check your cape, but you may have to tuck your shield under your chair. The end. Thanks for watching. You know, Maybe I can't travel through time or freeze and unfreeze it, but if only I could turn back time. One day, my dad bellowed, family, assemble. And, and he told us that he and our mom had made a momentous decision. Each evening after work, instead of drinking a gin and tonic, from that day forth, they would imbibe a vodka tonic. True story. Question. To a magic hammer, does every problem look like a magic nail? Finally, did you know that Robert De Niro has a phobia about wearing sleeveless outer garments? Yes, he has a cape fear. Now, let's meet our patient actors. Gina McKenzie, 
Ellie Torrey and Tom Hayden.